multi-chamber bag parenteral nutrition video series, part four, administration and monitoring. My name is David Keeler, and I'm a nurse in the Intestinal Rehabilitation Program Coordinator at Children's Mercy Kansas City in Kansas City, Missouri. Multi-chamber bag parenteral nutrition products, MCBPN. Aspen does not endorse any one product over another that may be seen in this presentation. So what are multi-chamber bag parental nutrition products? The Aspen definition. Standardized, commercially available parental nutrition products are formulations available from a manufacturer. These products require fewer compounding steps before administration. For example, multi-chamber bags containing concentrated amino acids with or without electrolytes plus concentrated dextrose with or without lipid injectable emulsions. For ease and purposes of this video series, we will call these products multi-chamber bag parental nutrition or MCBPN. Avoid using the term premixed as mixing and additives are required with these products. Parental nutrition use process. Parental nutrition employing an MCBPN product does not use true compounding, but the product needs to be safely selected, activated, and have additives injected prior to labeling. Administration is the last step before the PN reaches the patient and represents the last opportunity to prevent an error. Here you can see an example of a multi-chamber bag parental nutrition product. This three-chamber bag contains concentrated dextrose, amino acids with electrolytes, and intravenous lipids, all sealed in separate chambers. To prepare, the seals are broken, the formulation mixed together, and then components such as multivitamins and trace elements are added. There are a number of characteristics which need to be considered as they will impact administration, although some aspects are like regular compounded PN once they reach the bedside. For instance, in this table, you can compare and contrast low and high osmolarity MCBPN characteristics. These products vary in terms of venous access route, number of chambers where one product has IV lipids and another brand does not, volumes vary from 1 liter to about 2.5 liters, some have electrolytes while others do not, and the dextrose and amino acids concentrations vary from very low to higher concentrations. Given the complexity of parenteral nutrition therapy, errors in administration are possible. A recent study by Gordon Sachs reported 67% of parenteral nutrition errors were associated with administration. In the table pictured, you can see parenteral nutrition error data from the Institute for Safe Medication Practices from the last 10 years. The reported errors were consolidated into four types. Parenteral nutrition administration errors comprised 32% of this series of reports. The ISMP reports included A reports of administration of PN at an incorrect infusion rate, parenteral nutrition bags ripped when spiked with IV tubing, incorrect activation of multi-chamber bag resulting in the patient receiving only half of the ingredients, and three reports of the PN infusion pump not being turned on or initiating the infusion at the incorrect time. Steps in the administration process with MCBPN. There are many steps in the administration process with MCBPN. This includes utilizing the five rights of medication administration, meaning identifying the right patient, the right drug, the right dose, the right time, and the right route of administration. Also, nursing practice considerations. This would include aseptic technique, IV catheter care per your institution policy, and safe administration of other medications. The use of proper equipment and supplies. This would include the administration pump, administration set, and the proper filter for the solution. The solution should also be assessed for complications like cracking or precipitation. Additionally, the solution label should be compared to the prescriber order. Patient tolerance of therapy should also be assessed. This would include glucose control, accurate intake and output numbers, body weight, and vital signs. The individual administering PN should also assess for complications related to the PN therapy. Common complications would include extravasation of the solution into the patient's tissue, infection of the bloodstream or central venous catheter, hyperglycemia, and altered labs. Monitoring. Assessing the patient's body weight and growth to whether the patient is meeting the goals of therapy. And finally, documentation of the infusion in the electronic health record. 
All PN should be filtered whether it is a 2-in-1 or 3-in-1 solution. Here you can see an appropriate setup with a total nutrition admixture 1.2 micron filter. Administration competencies. Administration competencies need to be in place whether a MCB PN or compounded PN is used. These include uses of MCB PN with ILE can save nursing time, having only one infusion pump and line to manage. Cares for PN access devices according to evidence-based and institutional guidelines. Uses evidence-based interventions designed to prevent, detect, and manage complications related to the feeding formulation, infusion rate, equipment, and supplies and or access devices. And uses technology and electronic health systems for nutrition implementation. In summary, MCB PN administration is similar to other PN modes. Nursing care competencies are outlined and should be implemented with MCB PN. And MCB PN can save nursing time. References Acknowledgement This educational offering was provided to you by Aspen, supported by an educational grant provided by Fresenius Cobby.